Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about the force acting on a current carrying conductor. That is, when a current carrying conductor is kept in a magnetic field, what is the direction of force acting on this conductor? To find this direction, we have a rule that is called as Fleming's left hand rule. So first we will go to an activity. We will explain how the activity to be conducted. In that activity, the force will be acting in a particular direction. So that can be explained using Fleming's left hand rule. So first we will go to the activity. After that activity, we will go to Fleming's left hand rule and how to apply the Fleming's left hand rule. So first let us go to the activity here. Now consider a conductor which is kept inside a magnetic field. Here we have a horseshoe magnet which is in the shape of a horseshoe or in the U-shaped magnet. And for this magnet you can see here south pole is here and north pole is down. If south pole is here and north pole is down the direction of magnetic field will be upward. This B marked here this is the magnetic field. So we have a magnetic field which is toward that side. And we have a conductor which is kept here and this conductor is connected to your battery here. So in the battery you can see the positive of the battery here so the current is passing like this. So the current carrying conductor is kept in the magnetic field in the perpendicular direction. In the practical case it is like this, your magnet is like this, U shaped magnet is like this, here north is there, here south is there. And the conductor is like this, that is not like this, it is towards you like this. But I cannot draw like that, that's why it is drawn like this. So in three dimension you have to feel that the conductor is standing like this. Now when the current is passing through this one, here you can see the current is passing in this way, this direction. And here it is going up. Now it will experience a force, that's the first thing. When a current carrying conductor is kept in a magnetic field, it will experience a force. Now if you practically do like this, you can see the direction of this force will be toward this side. F will be toward this side. That is, when it is like this, it will go toward this side. Okay. Now, if you change the direction of current, then it will go to the opposite direction. Or if you change the direction of magnetic field, that is, instead of north to up, this north and south, if you rotate, then also it will change. So, what is the meaning of that one? In which direction the force is acting? That depends on the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field. Now, to explain this one or how to find out in which direction the force is acting, for that one we have a rule. That rule is called as Fleming's left hand rule. For this Fleming's left hand rule, what we have to do is, to apply this Fleming's left hand rule, we have to keep our fingers in the mutually perpendicular directions. And one more thing, this uh, mutually perpendicular direction means we have to uh, use the left hand. That is, first you have to stretch your left hand. That is the first finger, second finger and the third finger. Or we can call it as the thumb, forefinger and the middle finger. Okay. So we have to use these three fingers and these three fingers should be in mutually perpendicular directions. What is the meaning of mutually perpendicular direction? If you take this first finger and the middle finger, this will be in a perpendicular direction. That is 90 degree here. If you take this two, this also is in 90 degree. If you take like this, this, that also will be in 90 degree. So mutually perpendicular means how you are using your uh, graph sheet or if you think in three dimensional, x axis and y axis, you know x axis is upward means y axis is this one. So these two are perpendicular. Now the third set axis here toward this side. So it will be perpendicular if you look in any way it will be perpendicular. Okay. If you look like this or like this in all the direction it will be perpendicular. So our three fingers of the left hand should be mutually perpendicular. So what is the first part? You stretch your first finger, thumb first finger and the uh, middle finger of your, or of, uh, of your left hand in the mutually perpendicular directions. When you keep this one in mutually perpendicular directions, then next thing is, in order to find the force, what you have to do is, if the first finger shows the 
direction of magnetic field if the first finger shows the direction of magnetic field and the second finger shows the direction of current then the thumb will show the direction of motion once more for if the first finger shows the direction of magnetic field so uh, first finger f for field first finger for field f for field unit then after that you have the second finger second there is a k in that one so second finger for current so first finger for field second finger for current then the third finger will show the direction of motion or direction of force now if you apply here you can see in this diagram if your field is from north to south field is this way and current is this way towards you then definitely force is in this direction so that's what you have to use so if you go for the exact statement of this fleming's right hand rule sorry fleming's left hand rule uh, it is like this according to this rule stretch the thumb four finger thumb four finger and middle finger of your left hand such that they are mutually perpendicular if the first finger points the direction of magnetic field and the second finger in the direction of current then the thumb will point in the direction of motion of the conductor or force on the conductor now you see here even if you remember these three don't tell in the opposite way because in the next case it is coming that's why so always you have to specify if first is in the direction of field second in the current third you have to tell about the motion because here by using field and the current we are creating the motion clear here we are using field and the uh, current to create the motion so you have to tell motion at the end so that is about our fleming's left hand rule and where else its application will come that also you can think in other ways where it will come for example a question can come if a wire is carrying current from north to south in a magnetic field which is from east to west so what is the direction of force acting on that one in such examples you have to draw in your notebook better you use the same geography axis only you use then it will be clear that is you can uh, draw like this north here south here then here it is east here west here then according to the question you can use your hand and you can find out and one thing is very clear when it is like this the force will be perpendicular that is upward or downward only will get that also you may have noted that one that is if a current carrying conductor is kept in a magnetic field it will experience a force and that force will be perpendicular to both the field and the current it will be in the third direction okay so just like the map you draw this one and here you try in which direction it will be there for example once more i will tell like this if the earth's magnetic field is from south to north like that question will come actually that is a higher level thing that is earth's magnetic field is from south to north and if like why is carrying current from west to east so field is south to east then current is from west to east like this then the, this thumb is towards upward so you have to write the force will be towards upward like that you can apply and the same thing is applicable in the case of electric motor so the principle behind electric motor is our fleming's left hand rule it works based on fleming's left hand rule so whenever we are using current and magnetic field to produce any movement that place we have to use fleming's left hand rule again fleming's right hand rule is coming there this confusion should not come that's why i am stressing on that one wherever you are using current and magnetic field to produce movement there you have to use fleming's left hand rule now we will discuss about the electric motor so you know what is an electric motor electric motor actually it's a device which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy wherever we find some objects which is moving using electrical energy we, there we have an electric motor so for pumping the water we are using an electric motor or any other such purpose even even in the case of an electric fan or a mixer everywhere we have an electric motor so basically what the electric motor is doing it is converting the electrical energy into mechanical energy here 
it is making use of our Fleming's left hand rule. So now we will think about how a electric motor works. The very basic thing about the electric motor. So here we have a coil that is a circular loop or here it is a rectangular loop. We have a rectangular loop made up of copper which is kept in a magnetic field. So you see here, here I am drawing this already. A magnetic pole is there. So this side, a north pole and this side and now south pole is there. So between the north pole and south pole we will have a magnetic field. But one thing you have to keep in mind, practically like this a north pole alone and a south pole alone is not possible. Whenever you take any magnet, that magnet will have both north and south. So here I am drawing north pole means for this magnet another south pole will be there here. And for that south another north pole will be there. Don't think that you can keep separate same magnet one side north one side south you can do. It's not like that. For every magnet there will be a north pole and south pole. We cannot separate the north pole and south pole. If you cut the magnet into two pieces both will have separate north and south pole. Okay. Now we have the north pole here and south pole here. So it is very clear the magnetic field will be from north to south. Now you see here we have we are having a conductor or a loop made up of copper which is kept in the magnetic field. So here the current direction will be like this. Here the current direction will be like this. So a current is passing through this loop like this. Now one thing we discussed in the previous topic when a current carrying conductor is kept in a magnetic field it will experience a force. And one more thing in that point that is when it is perpendicular it will experience a force when it is parallel it will not experience any force so this side is there now this bc bc is parallel to the magnetic field then there will not be any force acting on this bc that is when the current is moving parallel to the magnetic field it will not experience any force here also this ad this side also we will not experience any force because it is parallel that is the current and the magnetic field is parallel but here it is not like that. This A, B and C, D, they are the, it is not parallel, it is perpendicular, the magnetic field is there. This is practically, this loop is perpendicular to this one. When I am drawing it becomes down, but actually the loop is towards you. The loop will be like this, standing like this, towards you. Okay, when you are drawing it becomes a little bit down. Okay. Now, we have to find out in which direction the force is acting. For that one we have to use the Fleming's left hand rule. So first we will use for this side AB. So this side AB, what we will do is, we will use Fleming's left hand rule. So you remember that one, you have to stretch your left hand in such a way that your thumb, the first finger and the middle finger comes in mutually perpendicular direction. Then if first finger shows the direction of field, that is from north to south is the direction of field. And second finger shows the direction of current. Here the direction of current is upward, so I have to turn it like this. So it's like this. So what happens? This one actually it is like this because in three dimension, so it will, it will be towards. So it is like this. Or we can say the force is downward. So this AB is experiencing a force which is downward. Field is that way. Current is into the plane of the paper like this. So the force will be downward. Now if I take same here, here the current is coming towards you, so it will be upward. So here the force is downward, here if you apply Fleming's left hand rod, the force will be upward. Here it is down and here it is up. So that actually your plane is like this. Here it is downward, here it is upward. So what will happen? It will turn like this. Here I am applying a downward force, here upward force, so it will turn like this. So that's what happens here, so it will rotate like this. Okay, so it will rotate like this. So this is what happening in the case of a electric motor. So electric motor is rotating like this. Now that's not over. When it is rotating, it will come here. When this one comes here, see, when this end comes here, then the force will be up, upward and here it will be downward. So that it will go back. That is, after rotating the half turn, it will go back. But we don't want such a motor. What we need is once it start to rotate, it, will, it should continue the rotation. So when this one reaches to this side, we have to change the direction of current. So for changing the direction of current, we have a setup here that is what I said, split ring. 
So we have a ring here which is having a gap here and here. Both places we have gap. Now what happens is that ring is maintaining a contact like this. One side of the ring if I take like this, here it is touching like this. So this will slip like this. And from here, this ring will go, the other ring, this side ring will come. So when it reaches to the other side, automatically the positive and negative will get changed. So what is the function of the split ring here? The split ring is working as a commutator. What is the meaning of commutator? It changes the polarity, positive and negative, it will interchange. So we have a setup of split ring here and this split ring is acting as a commutator or it will change the positive and negative direction it will change. In each half cycle once it will change the positive and negative direction then only it will continue the rotation otherwise it will come back. We don't want to come back, we want to continue the rotation. So this split ring is used for that one. Now once more when it is rotating like this we cannot connect wire to that one because this wire will just wind over that one. So in order to avoid that one, we will use a brush here. Brush means when something is rotating, this is just touching on that one. It will maintain the contact, but it will not be fixed there. A carbon brush which is touching there and it will maintain the contacts. So that's the working of an electric motor. So this is just the basic working for you to study 10th standard. But in the actual motor, just like if you keep a wire like this, it will not become a motor. In order to make a motor, in the practical case, there will be so many turns, not one turn, n number of turns, hundreds, thousands of turns will be there according to the capacity of the motor. And we will have very strong magnet. And in most of the cases in big motors, this magnet also will be electromagnet. Not like this, we will use electromagnet only for that. And Sometimes what happens is, not sometimes, in most of the cases, this will be, this entire thing which is moving, that thing, uh, that winding will be over a soft iron core, that is called as an armature. That is all the winding will be done over a soft iron core. So in all the commercial motors, commercial motors means what is that? The motors which we are able to purchase. In commercial motors, we will have a armature. What is this armature? Over a soft iron core, the windings are done on a soft iron core. So this is free to rotate inside the motor. That is called as armature. So in the practical motor, we have an armature inside and that is kept inside a, an electromagnet. So that it is free to rotate. So that's how a motor works. So once more the Fleming's left hand rule and the, how the motor works that we can discuss. Okay, here this is a DC motor. Actually we have AC motor also. but. No, no, we're not discussing about that one. Just you think about this DC motor only, how it works. Uh, you can, yourself, you can draw like this and you use your Fleming's left hand rule and you check whether the movement which is shown here, now this only you are getting or if, whether I went wrong or you are getting wrong, that you just check. Okay, thank you for now. Now, after this one, we will go for the next part, which is about the Fleming's right hand rule and electromagnetic induction.